Well, Mark Tight TV, we're back. International Brexit over, back to football, thick and fast. Uh, Easter weekend, we've got uh, some important fixtures coming up. So, Ryan the Bearded Tight as always, mate. It's a pleasure to have your time out. Uh, yeah, International Brexit over in Dunway. Uh, John Stones, England captain. You know, he's one on his own. It's all been banded about, but. Great you know, to see. We want to get back to his own football, don't we? Back at all. Well, uh, yeah. refocus back on it. Euros coming up. So, something to look forward to when the football season ends. Uh, but right at this moment in time, got a try coming up against the Cambridge United side, Ryan. In all fairness, fair fighting for the lives to stop in the league, but just outside of a relegation zone. Yeah. It's going to be a tricky, tricky game at home again against, uh, and I'm not being disrespectful, yeah. against the Cambridge United side. On paper, you're thinking we should be beaten, but we know what happens at home against teams from down there, uh, Ryan. Yeah, they've been struggling of late, haven't they, mate? They have been getting beat quite a bit of late, and I think. You know they're they're in, they're in a they're in a quite a steep decline, but you know we'll just see what happened against Cheltenham, mate. So you know nothing's guaranteed. Should we win? Yeah, absolutely. We should we should be coming out here and gain three points. And I think anything less than that, you're going to see a little bit of upset at Orkwell again. I think. Um, um, whereas I want Bowen, but I think you're going to see a lot of you know it's going to be uncomfortable if we don't beat Cambridge tomorrow, um, especially with Derby getting beat by Northampton. Um, at weekend, so it, you know that opens a massive opportunity for uh, you know ourselves, Bolton, Peterborough around them. So we've got to capitalise on it, haven't we? We've got to jump yeah, on yeah. them two games in hand. Um, so we've got to keep right on the court tail. So I don't, I mean, he's Stevenage and Portsmouth aren't they games in hand, but anyway, ne- ne- neither of them are guaranteed three points. But we've we've got to take advantage of, bar- of Derby getting beat, um, and it starts with a win on on Friday against Cambridge. Um, can't afford a performance like we did against Cheltenham, mate. You know, I, I mean, give it, give him the due, players. You know, I mean, five games in in fifteen days is is borderline ridiculous, especially when you've got so many weeks where there's one game a week, and then, then they go and smash five games into into fifteen days. It's just it's just ridiculous. And you could, I'm not making excuses for them, but you could see they were tired, especially in that second half. They, they, they look they look knackered, and and the poor performance showed. But yeah, let's. I mean. It should be a win, Neil, it is, and it should be a comfortable win. Um, but as 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 we've seen at Oakwell this season, <laughs> nothing's been particularly comfortable, has it? We've been fine away. If we're playing Cambridge away, I won't be that bothered. I thought I'd be thinking, yeah, we're going to go and steamroll them. But at Oakwell, Christ, who knows, mate? Who knows what performance we're going to see? Yeah, laugh at gods. It's right what you said about the the pictures. Have you know it, it goes bombs and it. We've got an international break, and it's like, did it come at right time? Possibly so. Um, you like to think that players have been on training ground, working on a few things, correcting a few things as well. Like you said, against the previous performance, it was substandard to say best. Yeah, we, you know, I think it was just the manner is in how it happened the defeat and the booing. What it more the players are the tactics, you know, not ascendancy. It's one of them. It could have been. I don't personally boo. I mean, I'll stay what and. You know, and if if I had to give it performance, so I'll, I'll just stand there and just look at players that I'll not like clap or boo because at the end of the day, the second league still. And, you know, we've had some great unbeaten runs, we've had some decent results, we've had some good, yeah. you know, performances. So, to, again, I, I kind of, I'm not saying, you know, it's a, it's a minority of fans. I'm not saying it's all fans, I'm a minority of fans, and, but people seem to. Focus on that is like, oh, they're booing them off. Not everybody were booing them off, to be fair. It well, not everybody were booing them off. Listen, if they want to, I don't agree with it, but if your fans want to boo, they've paid the money, and if they want to boo, they can boo. It's, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't agree with it personally, mm. unless it's like a 5 1 thumping like against Lincoln, but I'd already left back time final whistle once. So. Yes, yeah. But, um, the, yeah, it was already an handful of fans. It were, you know, I think when, when, um, uh, when Julianne come out and said that about you know tiring all the fans with the same brush, I think she was yeah. a bit I think that was a bit offside to be fair because it was literally an handful and most of the fans were saying what you're booing for. Most of the fans were having you know what nope. defending. Brown me was saying that, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean we, we could do with the performance, mate. We know what Cambridge are going to come and do. They're going to come and sit back, and 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 that's where we've struggled all season isn't it, at home, where tides have sat back, and it slows our play up, and we just revert back to that. Sideways, sideways, lump ball forward. We don't seem to be able to have figured it out. And that's a bit bit of a concern. Well, it's, it's a lot of a concern, if I'm being honest. 
that despite you know being able to see that happening lots of times that they haven't managed to come up with a game plan in which to in in which to combat it you know what i mean it's just um it's a bit of a frustration because we, we when we play good football and we're playing against good teams and it's a faster game like like against Derby and against Bolton we play some really nice stuff mate we play some really nice football mm. um albeit we could finish his chances off a lot better but you know we do we do play some really nice football when we've got when 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 the game, you know, whether the, the opposition accommodates it by their style, but when they sat, when they sit back, we just seem to like, it's like, all oh, right, we ain't got a clue what to do. And it, and it, it stands out like a sore thumb, doesn't it? Um, yeah. and, we, and we saw that against Cheltenham. I thought we'd sit <clears> back <throat> to that kind of play. And it was just, it was just, especially at second half, it was just in abundance, weren't it? And yeah. I guess, I guess we'll, I guess we'll say against Cambridge, mate. Um, I think. What we needed to, what we really need to do, like we need to get, like what we need to do against Cheltenham, where, is when we were dominant in first 15, 20 minutes, is get that goal. Then they've got to come out. They, then they've got to come out. They've got to result. You know, they've got to revert from there, sitting back, sitting back, sitting back, and have to come out. And, and that that that'll then lend itself to you know towards getting in behind and stuff like that. So that first goal will be all important um, come Friday. So I think if we get it, we go on and we go on and give them a bit of a a, a, a tonking. Interesting lineup uh, going to be against Cambridge. Uh, you know, Herbie Kane will serve his two game suspension, and he'll be welcome back. To be fair, <laughs> yeah, Pines yeah. just been on a bad affair. In you know, in his day. looks like he's out on here. It's again, you're kind of looking at the players what we've got on paper. You think you know what? Yeah, we should be strong enough to beat Cambridge. No yeah. disrespect to Cambridge. What's your take on Jallo? Because I saw a few things on socials. You know what social are like. So oh, how comes not playing for Barnsley? He's playing for Portugal under 19 and you know, whatever. Oh, he should be starting for Barnsley. I'm thinking, well, why should he be starting for Barnsley? It's, you can't trust he can't a young lad in like that. For us yet, mate. He's not physically enough. I don't, I don't, I don't think. You'd have him on bench, he, Ryan. I think he's, yeah, I would actually, yeah. I would, because, uh, you know, as much as I want Marshy to do well, when he's come off bench, he hasn't he ain't, he ain't really done out, has he? Mm. Um, Oh, there's probably not had opportunities, uh, so maybe I'm being a bit unfair, but yeah, definitely. Why not? You know, what I mean, I think it's just a timing thing. People, I think people are reading too much into it with with Jello. It's just the fact that he's come back. I'd just be pleased that he's come back from his injury because we, yeah. you know, the water rumour we're out for the season. I thought about my son, right? Well, the, the fact that he's come to fitness, he's coming to fitness at right time, and he's been able to go and play for Portugal. I think reading out else more into that is just, just, just making making noise for the sake of making noise. There's no need for it. You know what I mean? It's Playing for Portugal under 19s or what it 19s or 21s he paid for. To be fair, mate, I've, I've slept. Well, playing play for, play for playing international at, at 21s is very different to playing, you know, full full league one football. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's very different. You're playing against different players, the vast majority of which don't play, won't play um, at the highest level if they are playing in first team. A lot of them won't play first team football. So the intensity of the match is very different to what it would be in a, in a, you know, in a, in a full professional um, League One League One match, so there's also that as well. Um, I think we should just be pleased that he's come through it unscathed. They've come through with a good win. He's come through it unscathed, and hopefully he'll be available for hopefully he'll be available for selection to to, to come off bench because I think that's where he's at. He's most dangerous coming against tired legs. A bit of pace. I think starting. I think starting Jello, as skillful as he is, um, and, and a future superstar, he's just not quite quite got that physicality yet. Um, you don't want back too much expectation on my dear. No, year. exactly. He's got he's got a he's got a great career ahead of him. We don't we don't need to ruin him early. He's got a, you know he's only young. There's no need to thrust him in um, into into that sort of arena just quite yet. In my opinion, when, anyway. No, no, it's it's fine. I, I agree with that. You know, it's 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 young kids, young stars. Hopefully, we we'll sign him up for a longer contract as well. And again, nurture him, look after him, don't burn him out. Expectations. We've seen it. Happened to other young players as well. We expectations have been so high, and they've unfortunately not met them expectations. Which are out these kind of things. So yeah. again, I think with the setup and Bobby Assel as such as well, he'll understand about the player. Like I said, Bia, yeah, I would please. You know, we're a bit of uproar and like, oh, he's, what's going off at Barnsley? And I'm thinking, well, hold on a minute. You know, it might. Was it a plan? Was it been kept under wraps? And they've, they've agreed something with Portugal uh, FA. I would happy to see him. Their feet on grass, kind of thing. So, 
again, I don't know uh, his, what, what he played like. I didn't see the game or not, but he's got some minutes on belt. Yeah. Probably back at Barnes like now, just, you know, back to back to basics kind of thing. So, again, that's, that's I'll all just see him. Yeah, I'll, it's, I'll it's, him. it's no different for playing for 21s, wheels. Like, if you see if you see the likes of Kunde and when uh, and yeah. Benson that have played, that have been playing for 21s recently and, and, and Pines played for 21s when he, were, when he were coming through to get into the first team, it's like a stepping stone, isn't it? And it's a different intensity. It's not the same as as as, as you know as, as um, first team. It's just not. Mm. And these players are coming through unscathed with ninety minutes, and that's the only thing. That's all it is. It's like playing the twenty ones game for Barnsley. Mm. It's like that next stage of like that's like that next stage of recovery. As we've just said, as we've just seen with Cundy and um, match, and build, Benson. match fitness. Yeah. yeah, trying to get a match fitness back at a level at a less intense level. Getting on about. Players, they mentioned uh, Benson and Kundi. It'd be nice to see Kundi on, on bench at least. Uh, back yeah. To the match because, uh, you know, I think last year he scored it away at Cambridge. So, again, it's it's great to see that Kundi, after a long illness, is finally, you know, getting some kind of minutes under his yeah. belt to be on bench. Looking at the starting 11, Ben, Ryan, I mean, we mentioned about Herbie Kane, um, you know, possibly being back or being well. No, it's, not what's happened since you know, the suspension. What change would you make, if any at all? For yeah, Kane's got to come in for for John Russell and, and put put Luca back to um, to CDM that pivot CDM role in middle there, um, and, and obviously let Herbie and, and Adam Phillips go do their thing. So then, then three have got to start. Then three are fit. They've got to start. There's best right. starting three for midfield, aren't they? So yeah, okay. Herbie's definitely the Herbie's definitely got to come back in because uh, you know up until his last game where he got that. Um, where he picked up that card again, but again Lincoln, mm, yeah, again Lincoln. But I, everyone in the team had a bad game that day. So, but up up until that, he'd been putting some really really impressive performances of late. Mm. Um, so, um, it, it'll, be good, it'll be good to see her be back. Yeah, front two, front two. Oh Christ, none of them are firing on all cylinders, are they? <laughs> That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's. Um, I'd, I'd still I'd still probably put Cosgrove up there because I think he's. Again, he's a good. He's, he need, he does need. We keep saying it over and over again, Neil. He needs to add goals to his game, but he is a useful tool as well. He is. He's strong. He's. He's make. He makes the right runs. He takes players with him. He just needs to add goals to his game. He really yeah. does. I think as soon as he does, as soon as he gets that little bit of confidence with a couple of goals here and there, it, it, they'll, they'll start flying in. But he offers quite a bit more, Cosgrove, and I think he's played all right when he's played. I have to say, it's, I think it's he's more, one of the more a physical beast. presence, isn't he? Yeah, he is, mate. He's big. He's, he's an absolute tank in it. And then either McAtee or Cole. I'll probably go with McAtee because Cole's just so out of form, right at the wrong yeah. time in the season to be out of form. Um, if if he could come off bench and score one tomorrow and get his get his shooting boots back on for the rest of the season, that'd be that'd be very much appreciated. But he just seems he, he seems way off it at the minute. Does Devante for some reason? Everyone goes yeah. through it. All, all strikers go through these patches. He just needs to get. I think he just needs to get a goal on it, and then he'll, then he'll be fine. So I probably yeah, probably start with McAtee and and C Cosgrove up front, mate. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think recall, you know, he gone he gone on the scoring, you know, gone on a, a right streak at one point, and then also it's a balance spell, and it's just dried up. Yeah. It's... If he's, he's still second in goal scoring charts by one goal, mate, in League that's One, thing, and, and that's been going ten games without ten games without scoring. So he, he does score goals, and he has scored a decent amount of goals. But I think with start he got to begin the season, I would have expected to have seen him into well into twenties now. Yeah. And he's definitely had the opportunities to be well into twenties, and I'm sure he's well aware of that as well. So mm. I'm sure he does to tell him that. Um, I'm sure he'd have been disappointed. He's, he's disappointed with his goals tally. It, it, despite being second, it's not, you know, it could have been way start set off early season. Yeah, you know, it looked like we were going to have 20 plus, didn't it? Yeah. So hopefully Devante can get back into um get his shooting books back on and, and, and get some get some goals. But uh, I'd still probably start with McAtee and uh and, and Cosgrove. And I'd say the same about McAtee with regards to his finishing, mate. He needs to start taking his chances away as well. Mm. I just think he just, he's just got that pace, and he's got that pace, and, and it again, he just offers that little bit more um, when he isn't scoring to, to what Cole does when he's not scoring. He offers a bit more to the team as well with his work rate um, pressing from the front. You know what I'd like to see, and it's not it's not criticism. It's just what I've, things I've noticed through a lot of games. If I'm being honest, is that when we get to the final third, we won't ever ever pop. We know what can happen when such as like Adam Phillips can ever crack from outside the box. Yeah. Because I think 
although it's pleasing to see at times, sometimes it's a bit frustrating. And I mean, is that when we get a final third in and out box, we always seem to have a bit, a bit that extra pass, that extra yeah. full ball, that extra. And I'm thinking, if you ever, if you ever pop, I don't get this when you put yards out and you know, and shoot, yeah. shoot. I'm like, I don't, I don't get that. It's, if it comes off, it's a worldie, and everyone's raving about it. But it's very, very rare. But when you yeah. when you're in the right box, I was kind of thinking, oh, especially under some conditions, if a pitch has been watered, ever pop if if, if it takes a deflection, keeper fumbles, someone following up. But when I'm looking, always going to be following up <laughs> on it on the second ball, and I think that's what we need to understand is that ever crack a shot off, but we need someone running in, and. What I'm seeing at minute is that I don't think this players. And I don't mean this in a uh, disrespective way, but if someone had a pop, who's chasing in? I've seen yeah. Adam Phillips and he's had a crack sometimes. I'm thinking there's nobody following up for it. They're, they're like watching it. There's nobody anticipating that in case he fumbles, I'm, I'm in here. I'm, yeah. I'm not seeing that. So I'm, I, I'm more someone like that's what's on in training. It, it probably is. But when it comes to a match day, you know, when you're up against like uh, these statue silhouette dummy kind of things with free kicks and that, you've got to anticipate that that play is going to probably run away or create something to create an opening. And I, I, I'm just thinking, don't have a play, just have a pop at goal. It could yeah, fumble, it could it carry us. You know what I mean? It could, um, it just sometimes, in fact, a lot of time when we get into that final third, mate, it's very, very pedestrian at times. Mm. We, we, we seem to move ball, we, we're so dangerous when we move ball quick. And get that ball in. We look, we look, we look, look a different team, mate. And mm. we just there's a lot of time, mate, where we just get into the right positions, you know, and we just fight about with it outside box, messing about, too many passes, and then you, you, the defense gets set, and then you've got a lot less chance of actually. You're not going to get in behind them now. The defense is set, and now it's, it's you against them, and it's and a lot of the time defenders are you know winning it and coming away with it. Yeah, and so yeah. The, the amount of times that we get into the right positions and we don't eventually get a crossing and give a ball away for me, that'd be so frustrating as a coach. I'd be absolutely livid with that, mm. you know, because there's times where we get into really good positions and we've got a chance of getting in behind, but then we yeah. turn back and then look for another pass and then they've got set and then we'll look for another pass and eventually we lose it. Gone and on it. Shot all gone yeah. in, and it's, it, it, it can be really a frustrating watching. There were a lot against that against Cheltenham, especially in second half, yeah, but. It, yeah, there's the ones where they're good at. I'm amount of times you see you sort of wing back, either be Williams or or, or or Keith, give it ball and making that run to go down, go down wing, making the run, and we just come back inside. It's very rare it goes to, mm. when it's, we do go down right too much, but it's too slow when we do. But when when they do actually make that run, the amount of times I've seen right wing back make a run like that, and, and we don't pick it. Yeah, and that gets in behind back at defence for that, you know, for for that for that cross coming in then, and it's just. <laughs> It can be a frustrating watch sometimes, it? mate. It can be a really frustrating watch because we can be a lot better than than, than what than what we do. And it's just it, you're right, mate. Getting into that final third sometimes it's like watching paint dry. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, it's just an observation. What I've, what I've watched and other fans will probably might might think differently. I don't know, but passing time. Mm -hmm. But what I'm watching, I'm thinking, if it if it had been more clinical there. It, we, yeah. The games we could have won so much easier, and the chances yeah, I mean, gone. I think. I think that's the key, mate. And it? it's about being clinical, isn't it? It's just about being more clinical. If 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 we'd literally been fifty percent more clinical than we had been, mate, I, I, I oh, dare yeah. say we'd be in top two. <laughs> yeah, we've had yeah. so many games where we should have won and we haven't because we've not been clinical enough. Um, obviously, last time out against Cheltenham being a being a prime example, but. Um, yeah, let's hope that this break's done them good, mate. This rest has done them good. And we can come out firing on all cylinders. Um, Refre so refreshed, fun. recharged, and all being well a win. Uh, yeah. Good prediction time, then, Ryan, mate. Um, <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to be confident. And I, <laughs> I think I said 4 0 against Shelton, didn't I? Right. I'm going well, to it's say, so it's a good Friday, so I'll be well. It's a good Friday for Barnsley. Good Friday for Barnsley. I'm going to say 3 0 Barnsley. 3 0 Barnsley. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go three one Barnsley. I still think you know I'd be like take a clean sheet all day long, but uh, I still think there's goal there to go against us. But I'm going three one, but like I said, I'm hoping it's a good Friday for Barnsley. Yeah, like uh, again, we've got games in hand, but 
I'm not looking at the games and at minute. I want points on board. I'm looking at points on my For me, games in hand don't mean out. They're not people look at them and say, oh, it's games in hand, so we've got six points. It's like, no, it's not. You've got to win them. You've got to win them. They're literally games in hand. I, I, absolutely, I would prefer the not points. A given, on the board. Is it? <laughs> I prefer the points on the board a million percent because yeah. you, you know they're just games in hand are just fictitious points because you, you, you might you might have four games in hand and come away with no points if you don't win any of them. Exactly. So you know what I mean. You've got to actually, you've got to actually capitalise on on them. Um, and the two, the two away, the two games in hand that we've got are very difficult games. The Stevenage and Portsmouth away. So, um, you know, if we come away with four points out of those two games, I'd be absolutely, I'd, I'd be, I'd be really pleased Back with that. Yeah, Back yeah, hands off of that. yeah, all day long. Uh, Ryan, as always, it's been a pleasure, mate. Uh, quite Cheers, a bit to talk about. Back, back to work well. Back to. You know, football, that's what we've been uh, answering for. All being well, uh, lads can come back as well. Uh, kids for a quid as well, so it's going to be a decent turnout. Well done to the club for that. Uh, good, good gesture by the club. Kids for a quid, pack up well that. Let's hope we can get uh, three points. Two goals would be all right. And uh, not a squeaky bum time for us. Let's have a good Friday. <laughs> up. We're into uh, Easter. We're into uh, the bank holiday picture away at Burton. Which we'll do another video of that as well. So, right, Beardy Tack, as always, mate. A pleasure to uh, join him. Uh, let's get behind, lads. We always do. Let's roar them on. Let's, uh, let's make a good Friday and eat a special one for Barnsley. Uh, one thing left to say. Here we go.